Hello everyone and welcome back to Mezzomedic. My name is Kitty and I'm an academic junior doctor working in the UK. Today we're going to continue the CV building for medical student series and focusing on what prizes you can get whilst at medical school. In this video, I'll first talk about what the scoring criteria for prizes and extracurricular achievements might look like at specialty training. Then we're going to talk through what prizes you can win at medical school at a local, regional and national level. Throughout the video, I will also address how hard it is to actually win some of these prizes, and the answers might surprise you. So first of all, let's take a look at the scoring criteria for extracurricular achievements or prizes. This particular criteria is taken from the core surgical training checklist, but I imagine that the weighting of the points is probably similar across other specialties as well. So the lowest scoring prizes you can win is a scholarship bursary or equivalent awarded during medical undergraduate training or foundation training. The next step up is one prize or distinction relating to parts of the medical undergraduate training or foundation training in the top 20%. And the next step is more than one prize in the top 20% or one prize in the top 10%. And of course, the ultimate level is a national prize open to all trainees in medicine. So the question that everybody has is how difficult is it to actually win a prize? So from the scoring criteria, you can see that prizes are generally weighted by their geographical reach. However, I found that depending on what the prize is, a local prize is not necessarily easy and a national prize is not necessarily as difficult as some people might think. So throughout this video, I'm going to have a graph of the probability of winning the prize versus the impact of the prize on your CV. So a national prize would be sort of at the end of this side. A simple bursary locally would be on the bottom of our scale and then the probability of winning, so if it's a very difficult prize, so very difficult to win down here, and very easy to win at the top. And we'll mark down a point at which we think each prize falls under, and of course that's my own opinion only. So in terms of local prizes, the first thing that comes to mind is probably a distinction or merit you can get on a medical school exam. Now, depending on which medical school you attend, this can be easy or harder to get. So at Bristol, where I went, there was never a top 10% prize or distinction or merits. You only win a recognition if you are the top scoring person in the year. And because of this, it means that it's very hard to get a prize because you're always competing against 200 odd people. But at other universities where they award top 10% or top 5%, it might be slightly easier to get. So on our graph, I'm going to put it as such a very difficult local prize. The next local prize that you can potentially get is having a distinction or merit with your primary medical qualification, i.e. having an honours with your medical degree. Generally speaking, you have to be in the top 5 or 10% to get recognition for this, so again, you're competing against 200 or so people. For some of you, this may be pretty attainable, but statistically speaking, the majority of you will not be getting it. So it is again, quite difficult, local 10%. Some other prizes you may get from your local medical school are prizes for SSCs or student selected modules and electives. In my opinion, this is usually easier to get than some of the other medical school prizes because not everyone in your year will be completing high quality research projects during their SSC period or their electives. So the competition is generally less compared to other mandatory coursework or exams. And certainly in my medical school, if you were interested in your project and you produced a good output, then you'll easily get into the top 20%. However, because there's such a wide variety of SSC and elective projects that you can undertake, it makes it really hard for assessors to objectively compare, say, a research project versus a volunteer global health trip. So there's a bit of uncertainty when it comes to winning a prize or getting in the top 10% for this. And lastly, there's generally a lot of opportunity for you as a medical student to get a bursary or support in funds to attend and present at a conference or to undertake a research project. I find that these are pretty easy to obtain and are often neglected by medical students simply because they don't know that these opportunities exist. Often you can find sources of funding from either your medical school itself, university-wide initiatives, or from the department that you did the research work with. There's usually a simple selection process and an application form you have to fill out and voila, you get funding and travel to a conference for free. One last category of accessible medical school prizes that come to mind is funding or bursaries to undertake a research project during your summer and outside of the curriculum. I've talked about this before in my video about how to get involved in research, but essentially there are a number of initiatives out there in each university, including the INSPIRE initiative, which pays students to undertake research projects in their own time, especially during the summer. 
This usually involves identifying a supervisor and a potential project you can do, writing up a project proposal, and going through a slightly more rigorous selection process, which may or may not involve an interview. In general, these are a bit harder to get than just a bursary to go and present at a conference, but the payout is much larger, and you can potentially get more support to present and publish your work in the future. There are a few regional prizes that you can get as a medical student, but these are kind of the odd in-between. The majority of prizes are either local or national, and regional ones are sort of hard to come by and a bit rare. In general, there are some areas that you can look into, and I'm just going to change my colour to yellow for regional prizes. So of course, firstly, there are prizes for regional conferences or QI conferences that you can present at. I think these are pretty good opportunities to get a prize because the competition is usually much less and limited than a national level conference. But regardless, it does mean that there are usually a lot more trainees involved and are usually open to more than just medical students. So it is harder than just a local event. There are also some competitions for medical students at a regional level. For example, the Royal College of Surgeons Edinburgh Surgical Skill Competition, which runs first in each region of the UK before having a national heat. So if you win something like that, then it will count, but these are often few and far in between. So finally, we have the national prizes, the big leagues. It goes without saying that national prizes are generally harder to get because it is across the country and it involves all the trainees that are in the UK and sometimes even beyond the UK. However, I would say that you should never count this out. I think a lot of medical students have this preconception that they will never win a national prize so they don't try, when in reality lots of your peers actually think the same, so you're actually competing against less people than you might think. As they say, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So in general, I think there are three main opportunities to win a national prize. The first of this is obviously winning a prize at a national conference or a national event. Now this is usually really really hard to get because not only are you competing against senior trainees all across the UK who all have more experience than you, you might also be competing against collaborative research groups which produce much better data in general than most people can achieve on their own. In addition to having a high quality research project, it also depends on how topical your research is at the moment, who your assessors are, who are the panel members that are asking you questions, so there is definitely a degree of luck involved. However, there are ways to boost your chances of a national conference prize. Try and look out for national conferences that offer specific students-only prizes, or national conferences that are only for medical students and foundation doctors, which reduces your competition by a whole mile. Beware for the latter though that it has to be organised by a nationally recognised body, such as the Royal College of Surgeons or Royal Society of Medicine. Conferences that are only organised by undergraduate students with no national recognition fall into a sort of grey area where they often don't count, because if you think about it, theoretically anyone could set up a conference and call it national. So if you're looking to get a prize from a national conference just for medical students and foundation doctors, I would say this actually increases your odds quite well. Next, there are a number of national essay competitions that you can get involved with which is run almost every year by bigger societies like the Royal Society of Medicine, like the Nora Schuster Essay Prize. And you can also find lots of these competitions in specialty specific groups. For example, BOTA for orthopaedics, the Royal College of Obsangani, and the Ruler Club, which is a vascular trainees association which I'm a part of, and we run an essay competition every year in November. I think essay competitions are generally a great way to do some background reading and learn a bit more about your specialty, and often they offer runner-up prizes or commendation prizes for entries that score highly but didn't necessarily win. I think that essay competitions are still quite hard to win at a national level, but I think there are actually less entrants than most people think in most of these circumstances, so definitely worth applying. And lastly, you can look at national bursaries or grants, which are usually the easiest prize you can get at this level. There are funded research internships that you can apply to, such as that offered by the Wellcome Trust or the BMA, which, to be fair, the selection process is quite rigorous. And of course, there are many smaller grants to support things like your medical elective. And finally, there are some national societies that offered a paid clerkship or internship to experience clinical work. For example, the Society of Cardiothoracic Surgery has an initiative to select students with a strong CV and a strong interest in cardiothoracic surgery to undertake four weeks of paid internship at a particular tertiary hospital with a heart institute. 
Although in general there is still a fair amount of competition for these types of bursaries and grants, if you do some digging around, there's probably more opportunities around than you think. And that wraps up this video. That was relatively short, but hopefully you have found it useful to look at what opportunities there are to get prizes to bulk up your CV. If you're wondering about how to build the other areas on your CV as a medical student, I have a series on this on my channel, which you can check out the playlist right here. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified when the next video comes out. That's it for now and see you next time. Thank you.